What's up, everybody? Welcome to Las Vegas and welcome to International Fight Week. <laughs> Who's got the first question? I want to start with the uh, champ, Alex, please. Uh, Alex, yesterday at Yuri said that he doesn't believe he really needs to change his strategy in this fight, that he just needs to execute better. Do you believe him that he's not going to change his strategy? And if so, what do you, what do you make of those comments? Alex, ontem o Yiri falou numa entrevista que ele acha que ele não precisa mudar a estratégia dele. Que é só executar a estratégia que vai dar tudo certo. Você acha que é isso? Você acha que ele não vai mudar a estratégia então e vai fazer a mesma coisa? Bom, eu acho que é difícil responder por ele. Essa é a opinião dele, é a estratégia dele. Mas eu acho que pode ter algumas mudanças, né? A gente tá falando de um alto nível, né? Tá sempre estudando. Vamos ver. I think it's really hard to answer for him. Uh, that's his opinion. That's what he's going to do. I think we're talking about an athlete of the highest level, so there could be some changes. Let's wait and see. And to follow up on that, Alex, you've had a, a lot of rematches between your MMA and your kickboxing career. So what do you find the biggest key is to repeating the success of the first fight in the rematch? Olha, você já teve, para dar uma para você, Alex, é, você já teve sucesso agora nessa sua carreira do MMA. Você já teve uma vitória contra ele. Como é que você acha que se repete o sucesso da primeira luta? Bom, eu estou indo para essa luta como se a gente não tivesse lutado. Eu não estou aqui é, garantindo que, pô, eu ganhei dele uma vez, então agora vai ser mais fácil. Com certeza eu sei que vai ser uma luta dura, eu sei que ele está preparado, eu também estou preparado, mas eu quero ganhar. I'm going to approach this fight as I've never fought him uh, before. I, I know it's going to be a hard fight. Uh, I know he's going to be prepared. I'm going to prepare. It's going to be a great fight. Alexa, and for Yuri, if I could, uh, this is a short notice fight, of course, but you wanted it for a long time. You fought before. How much time would you say you spent training, preparing for Alex in this rematch before it was booked? Like, uh, after three, three weeks, last three weeks, I spent all the training and uh, last, last two weeks was like of, of the finishing, the preparation. So, but it doesn't matter. For me, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the chance is here and uh, the asking came. So, I'm here. I want to show my best. That's all. And I'm every, that's my answer every time. Let's go for that. And Yuri, yesterday, we, you were breaking down Alex and you said his focus is what makes him so dangerous. How do you combat that focus? How do you combat that trait? Do you have to break his focus or you have to have more on your own? You know, uh, it's, it's about the focus in a hard situation. Yeah, in, uh, in uh, like the highest performance. That was the, the second round with me, for me last time. And uh, like I said, I was not in the in best shape last time in New York. A lot of sickness, a lot of... Uh, that was not good. That was not good shape. In, uh, in, uh, in New York, but it doesn't matter for now. Right now, I feel great, and I'm, hum I'm very happy for that. And uh, tomorrow, no, Saturday, I want to show that, that I'm the champion. Question, Brian, who's Brian next? Ortega. Question for Brian Ortega, all the way in the back right here. You've been in the top five at Featherweight for years and years. You've sought the best of the best. You fought former champions, number one contenders. But now you're fighting someone outside the top 10 on relatively short notice. So I guess what does a win over Diego Lopez do for you in your career moving forward? It's just another win, man. That's it. And historically, when you get two high-level grapplers in there, it can kind of turn into a striking battle. So I'm curious, when you do break down Diego's game, set, game, game plan and skill set, what kind of fight are you expecting from him? Uh, he's a tough guy everywhere, man, you know, on the feet, on the ground. Um, it, it's going to be one of those we have to get in there and feel for it and, and get a feel of what it's going to be like. And then once we're throwing those gloves, then we're going to find out what kind of war you guys are going to get. What's for Diego? Obviously, like I said, Brian's fought the best of the best at featherweight. You seem to be the fan favorite coming in, so I'm curious, what kind of fight do you expect from Brian in this fight? Diego, has peleado contra los mejores hasta el momento. Has visto como él ha peleado contra los mejores. ¿Qué clase de pelea esperas el sábado? Pues, tú sabes que Brian tiene sangre mexicana, entonces lo que yo espero es una guerra allá arriba. ¿Cuál esperar la pelea de la noche? I think it's going to be a lot of Mexican grit. I think it's going to be a, a great fight on Saturday. That's where you can win. Question for MVP. Michael, yesterday at the media day, you said that if you were fighting Ian out of the UFC, people would be calling this another can that you've beaten. If you're using the word can, does that mean you think this is going to be an easy fight?
Yo. No, nah, no, nah, it's not an easy fight at all. I'm saying that in terms of the perspective of other people, I just find it weird. But for me, I always train for any of my opponents as if they're the best in the world. So I come out and make sure that I'm the best in the world when I'm in their cage. So that's it. Yesterday, Ian was saying he doesn't really feel excited to fight you. You know, your rank's below him. There's not a lot in this for him. Do you kind of agree with that assessment or do you think a win over you would still push him up those rankings? Michael. Okay. Question for Ian. Ian, yesterday you described yourself as the new generation of striker. Michael didn't really agree with that assessment. What is it that he isn't seeing in your skills that he's going to find out on Saturday? Michael has an incredible skill set. His striking is world class and we all know this. But I've said it. So am I. It's my job to go out there and prove that I'm younger, I'm faster, I'm more talented, more technical, and there's a reason why I'm hyped as one of the best prospects this sport's ever seen. Question again for MVP. Um, you know, like Ian just said, he's ranked above you, he believes he's better than you. Do you believe he's underestimating you going into Saturday? Yeah, I think that's a... I, I don't believe he's actually underestimated underestimate me at all. I think it's more a case of trying to belittle what he knows is a dangerous thing, make it feel smaller, because it's going to help him with his confidence. Confidence is a big part of his game. I don't think I've ever had a confidence in my life. Problem with confidence has never been an issue for me. I understand I your skill set. But I'm just out here to prove that I'm better than you, pal. All right. I need subtitles. I can't hear him. I do not underestimate you. I just know I'm better than you. Is that clear enough? Well done, bro. Well done. And uh, for Ian, you said you've already taken out MVP in your mind. How does it go down on Saturday? Ment mentalization and focus and everything that goes on in your head is so important and I just don't see a way where he's able to keep up with my speed, my cardio. I think he's going to get desperate in the second round and I see we fall him in the third. Mason. Mason. Go, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Uh, yesterday you said that Mayra doesn't have the right mindset right now and she's kind of, of, of a mess. Would you mind to explain a little bit more why do you think she doesn't have the right mindset and how are you planning to take advantage of? I just, I've been doing a lot of mindset work uh, the last almost two years now. You know, I had a lot of time off. And, uh, you know, I just really believe on humility and being humble as a part of code of ethics, you know, doing the right thing all the time. This is, you know, this division is getting stirred up and I love it. You know, you never know what's going to happen at this point and we really need it for the 35 division. Um, you know, and mindset is everything. I know these girls are good, right? And it, I think it's going to be a battle of mindset. Citaram, uh, nas suas últimas lutas a gente viu algumas trocas de rugas, você com a Raquel, com a Juliana. Para essa luta parece que vocês estão mais tranquilas. Uh, você respeita mais a Mace do que as outras adversárias? E como é que você responde o que ela disse sobre você? Uh, Myra, uh, in your past fights, there have been some chirping back and forth with your opponents, back with Raquel Pennington and other uh, fighters. But this one, it seems like you respect her. I mean, there's nothing going on, no animosity. Do you respect Macy more than you respect the others? And I'd like you to comment on her answer. I have no respect and no disrespect because I don't know who's her. Alex, uh, uh, Poitam, uma última pergunta. Poitam, o Giri falou que você está usando mágica e algum tipo de ajuda espiritual. Uma pergunta simples. O que você acha disso que você está usando? Que, o que você diria para ele? Qual a sua resposta? Uh, Poitam, Yuri said that you're using some sort of sorcery, some magic, some, some things uh, from the beyond. Uh, that's what Yuri said about you. Uh, what would you like to comment on that? Eu acho que a gente, todo mundo né, tem um espírito. É, eu acho que a gente não vive só, só de corpo, né? É, eu acho que talvez ele não tenha encontrado dele, né? E como eu falei ontem, é, eu não tenho culpa. Um, you know, I think everyone has a spirit. We don't just live in a body. Uh, he, if he hasn't found his spirit yet, it's not my fault.
Yeah. Sorry, this is not the question about like who I believe, if I am self-confident or not. I am 100% self-confident. But this is the speak about some dirty, some dirty practice and all these things are behind that. And I, wanna, I just want to keep that in a clear way. That's all. That's all what I'm talking about. This is all. In his name. All right, go ahead. Uh, Dana, actually a, a question for you. Uh, fantastic rematch in this main event, but you also have a rematch with Michael Rubin tomorrow at UFCX. Yeah. Pack Fight 2, Fanatics Live. Just wondered what your thoughts are about that and if you have a message for Michael. Yeah, so one of the cool things about this, obviously all the things that are going on UFC this weekend, uh, you know, we do these unboxings of their cards, and, and these cards are actually expensive. There's some good ones that pop up. And all the ones that we unbox and open tomorrow at UFCX, we're giving away to the fans. So uh, if you guys are at UFCX, check out the unboxing tomorrow. All those cards go to you guys. So it's fun. I, I actually enjoyed doing it last time. Great stuff. Question for Anthony Smith. Anthony, I feel like you're the ultimate company man. Short notice, change of opponent. Can you just describe the mindset when these opportunities present themselves to you? Man, I've been saying for a long time, I'm a fighter's fighter. I just show up when they call. I've been doing this shit since 2008. It has nothing to do with being a company man. I, there's opportunities in front of me. I'm going to take every single one of them. Once upon a time, my, my history was going to be, uh, maybe I'd be the best guy working in the factory. So I'm going to take every fucking opportunity that they give me. Great stuff. Uh, Roman Delizze. Roman, um, not a lot of people may know this, but you were a footballer before you found MMA. The Euros are taking place right now. If you could just give me your uh, thoughts on Georgia taking on Spain on Sunday. It was a big win for Georgia. We made a history. And uh, I want to congratulate my country. We are all very happy and proud. And Georgia, thank you for everything. And one more question for Michael Venom Page, London's finest MVP right there. Michael, last time you walked out to a remix of the Undertaker theme. This time around, you created a special song for the walkout. You've released it. What was the mindset and the, uh, the inspiration behind that one? It's just about having a little bit of fun, a little bit of banter. So go check out the new track on Spotify, BBL Gary. That fake guy over there. Question for Dana. I know you guys have some crazy days behind the scenes at the UFC every day. So how satisfied are you standing up there right now being able to deliver this amazing card for us on Saturday? That question for me, is that what you said? Yeah. What's the question? Am I excited about this event? Well, given the crazy events, how satisfied are you being able to deliver this card after the fallout from the main and co-main? I, I mean, when you look at, at this business and what we do and the fighters that we deal with on a daily basis, the fact that all these people are sitting up here right now after the shit show what that was this last month. These people are incredible, they're amazing, and uh, I mean, you all know what's gonna happen. The card is awesome, and, and, and I've been saying this now for a week. The co-main and main event, the question is which one of those two is gonna be fight of the night. It's almost a guarantee that one of those is fight of the night. It's a coin toss, so I'm very, I'm very excited. Question for uh, MVP. When you made your debut, you fought another fan favorite in Kevin Holland. This time it looks like you're going to be the unanimous fan favorite on Saturday night. We have some MVP chants going on. How does that feel to hear that in your second fight inside the UFC? Yeah, you know, I appreciate going anywhere and receiving love. I love that kind of energy. It helps me during the fight. It helps me in the build-up. But at the same time, you know, if, if the crowd's against me, trust me, I, I, make, I always change minds. I always change minds, so no matter. And question for Ian, it seems like you've embraced this villain role. If all goes well for you on Saturday, would you like to take on another villain again in Colby Covington? I've not embraced the villain role. I'm being myself and everyone who boos and everyone who says shit just has none of their fucking research and it's pretty stupid. The truth is, I don't care who I fight. I'm going to run through MVP Saturday night. I'm going to fight anybody who's next. You give me Coben, you give me Usman, you give me Shavka. I've told you. I need to be one of the greatest to ever do this, and I need to take out the guys at the top. One for Anthony Smith. Uh, Anthony, you have been in long pursuit of that championship belt. How motivating is it to look over and see Alex and that title just sitting a few feet away from you? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think in the past I've let the title fight kind of blind me a little bit. So I'm not really moving and grooving with, with the title being the thing that makes the decision. So I just got to win the next fight. And I think if I keep putting the next fight together, I'll find myself in a title fight. So I'm, I'm just focused on Roman Delize right now. And just one for you, Dana. Uh, you just said you don't know which one is going to be the fight of the night of the main and the co-main. How about for International Fight Week, would you put up two fight of the night bonuses? How, how about what? Would you put up two fight of the night bonuses for International Fight Week since you said you don't know which one is going to be? Make them 303,000. Make them 303,000. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. Let's go. Not 303,000, but two, three. two bonuses. Uh, yeah, boo you. Uh, that, that, what, one more. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Thank you. A uh, question for Ian. I think your success has necessitated all the confidence in the world. But to play devil's advocate, when you describe yourself as so much better than MVP, if you lose on Saturday, how do you pick yourself up promotionally, marketing? It's never, it's never a case. It's not in here. Look. I'm so talented. This guy couldn't win a world title at Bellator and he's trying to come over here and he's trying to do something different. What he's doing in the UFC is trying to legitimize his career. I'm going to put an end to his career on Saturday night. I'm going to finish him and I'm going to send him back to London. He's going to be on his own. He's going to be in his head. I've already broke this man's confidence down so much. He knows I don't need to say what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm on about. Your self-confidence is fucked. You know what I'm talking about, and it will come out, it'll come out, kid, but your brain is fucking scurrying for excuses. <laughs> Yo, this guy is hilarious. Just remember. Do you want to say it or will I? Do you want to say it or will I? What am I talking about? It. Tell the people. Hear it. Did you and your hear team it. offer hear thousands it. of dollars gonna hear it. to get oh. information and shoot the box? It. From my boys, You're did you send it. someone a message and offer it. thousands for information and yet couldn't infiltrate the camp? You couldn't get into what? The shooter box family's too tight. Your little fucking rat jiu-jitsu coach home on offered money to one of my Brazilian friends and you got nothing. Saturday night, you're fucked. <laughs> anyway, all I know is the one All and right, only your MVP spend it after is this here fight. now at the UFC. You're never fighting again and I'm about to make fight. some noise. You and your jiu-jitsu coach again suspended for life. Literally can't understand you, bro. You Shut the fuck up. I'm the fuck down. All right. So. <laughs> say it. Say, I'm going to put him to sleep on Saturday. Say what you want. Keep going, boys. Call his name. When I knock him out and I put him unconscious, everyone's going to be fucking screaming. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy everything here this week at Fight Week. Uh, there's a free concert tonight down on Fremont Street. I'll see you down there. We're going to rip this out of here and square these guys off. Thank you very much. Have a great day.